Hello guys and welcome to this week's episode of You've Got Issues. I'm your host Idia Aysian and this is the show where you send us your questions and with the help of my guests we give you tips and advice. Remember we're not experts but a problem shared is indeed a problem halved. Today we're going to be talking about everything beauty and beauty blogging and I have two gorgeous beauty bloggers here with me today, it's Tina Gilbert and Sandra Leifa. Welcome to the show. Thank, thank you. you. So how are you guys doing? Good. Doing very well, thank okay, you. So how long have you been beauty blogging for? About two years now. Two years. And yeah. what's your experience been like? Well, funny enough, it's been good. Like, I know a lot of people struggle with um, growing their content uh, page on Instagram. I started, I'm doing just Instagram okay. for now. So yeah, I started on Instagram and it's been really, really good. Like I didn't expect the amount of growth within within this time That's period. That's quite a time, yeah. yeah. So it's been really, really nice for me and I guess it's because I put in the work too. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy about where I am today. Okay, so how about you, Sandra? What's your experience been like? Do you do just Instagram or do you do YouTube as well? What Experience I do YouTube as well, but okay. I've been doing Instagram for almost three years. But I recently just joined YouTube March this year, and the growth has been okay so far. Like I didn't even expect it to grow in the way that it has, because YouTube is is different it's from different Instagram. Because doing videos, talking in front of the camera, trying to get a family, like a community, it's not been easy. But I thank God because it's been good so far. Okay, well, I feel like I have a lot to learn from you too, so I'm part of your audience today. Let's solve some tough issues. We want to hear our first question from the board. Whenever I apply eyeshadows, I experience fallouts all over my cheeks and the color of the eyeshadow is not as pigmented as it should be, therefore piling the shadow on my eyes, which makes it look clumsy. What exactly am I doing wrong? Please advise me. Okay, so starting with you, Tina. Okay. I think the problem most times is from the eyeshadow itself. So you need to know how to pick out a very good eyeshadow palette. Look for the very, I won't lie, most of the very nice quality ones are expensive. So you have to spend the money if you want to get a very, very good, good product. Results. Yes. And also another way to remedy the fallout is to use a very good eyeshadow base, the primers. You can use, if you don't have the eyeshadow base, one I know is by um, Urban Decay, but if you don't have that and you can't afford that, use your concealer. Use your concealer, blend it out, then set it with a certain powder. It also does the work. Um, so that kind of remedies it. Also use a certain spray on your brush before packing on the color on your Oh, lid. a certain spray on the on brush? On the brush, yes. Okay. Well, I guess I don't know if you are. <laughs> um, Sandra. So first of all, you need to get a really good eyeshadow. You can compromise on a lot of other beauty products, but when it comes to eyeshadow, you should spend the money and buy really good eyeshadow products. And when you're applying your eyeshadow, try not to apply it this way. You need to pack it on, like you need to pat the mm, eyeshadow into the, it in. into the eyes. Yeah, you need to pat it in so it doesn't have a lot of fallout. And like she said, you need to wet your brush. Like you don't need to use a certain spray. You could actually just use a wet wipe. Just put it on the brush, wet the brush, then apply it. So yeah, that works. Oh, that's very helpful. Okay guys, you've heard from our guests. Good luck with that. Let's take our second question for the day. Let's hear it from the board. I saw somewhere on how makeup products expire, but I'm a makeup addict and I collect makeup rather than buying when I need them. How do you know when your makeup product has expired and is it safe for use afterwards? Wow, so I think I've actually heard um, them talk about this once on the Tyra Banks show because a lot of people don't even know that makeup expires. So how do you know when it's time to say, okay, it's enough, I need to throw this product away? Because I don't think it has the expiry yeah, date. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have the expiry it doesn't. date, so you actually can't tell. But I think the way you can tell is, for example, when you buy it, mm -hmm. it takes like about six to seven months. Really? Just six yes, months? just six to seven months. So you, well, it's, a, it's ample time for you to use it. <laughs> no, six to seven months, that's too small. Too small? You're buying a uh, eyeshadow palette for 20,000. And you're telling me to keep it for two, uh, six to seven months? No. Okay, well, that applies think... mostly for like liquids or your lipsticks. Yes. Like foundation and liquid lipsticks. Well, for li liquid lipsticks, I know um, the way you can tell is um, they tend to kind of start separating. Mm. Like you see, there's a space in between and then there's product up, there's product down. When it does that, then just throw it away. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've had some of my makeup for yeah. like two years. <laughs> <laughs> I still have though because I'm a hoarder. I I'm not going to lie. Yeah. So I still have makeup products for 
that I have time. had from you know two three years back, and okay. I still have them. But when I notice that oh this one is is giving up, I just throw it away. But 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 um, after that amount of time, for instance, because I can't tell the difference. So when you apply it after that amount of time is there really a difference in how it looks when it's applied yeah sometimes especially the liquid lipsticks it, it kind of dries out mm. probably it used to be a little bit creamier but oh. then it dries out and then it starts to give you dry patches and yeah, it becomes chalky on the because it's wow. disgusting yeah <laughs> okay okay so i've learned something as well today guys um after si wait six months to a year yeah um, it's probably best to start checking out replacing the makeup that you have and also watch for like separations clumpiness etc and drying out of your lipsticks foundation yeah. etc guys we have to take a quick break now but don't forget that you guys can email ygi at myspice.tv with any questions that you have and you can also hashtag ygi on facebook instagram and twitter we have more questions on beauty and beauty blogging after the break so don't go anywhere <music> Hello guys and welcome back to You've Got Issues. We're still discussing beauty and I'm still here with Tina and Sandra. So it's time for our third question for the day. Let's hear it from the board. I recently started my beauty blog. However, I'm not getting as much traffic on my page. What do you think is the best strategy that has worked well for you to get more traffic to your blog? Okay, so what would you guys tell this person to do? I know a lot of people have issues with that period, not just in beauty, yeah. but in driving traffic to whatever you're trying to do, your website, your blog, your page, etc. And I want to start with you. I think the first thing, to, the first thing to put in mind is that you need to be consistent. Like consistency is key. You need to, when you're consistent, people know that you upload every day or mm -hmm. every two days or once a week. So yeah. they look forward to coming to your page. And then another thing to do is to tag beauty brands. For example, you use products from, let's say, Tara, House of Tara. When you use their products and you do a good job and you tag them, they, they tend to repost your work. So okay. reposting your work helps to view your page with okay. time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yes, um, I would say the same thing, uh, consistency, because that was what really helped me. When I started, I, I work. I have a nine to five. Okay. And I was doing that and beauty blogging as well so I would post every day I would do my makeup every day take wow. pictures every day post have you different content <laughs> yes you have to put in the work I mean it's not going to be easy it's not is an easy right people will see your picture oh yeah she's fine makeup nice and then they just uh, so move on high. but there has to be something catchy about your work you have to you ha also have to present your work in the very best light like you have to if it means like okay you have probably you don't have the very best skin um, the makeup is kind of not showing up as best as it should you can i'm not saying photoshop but try and smooth it out a little bit so that when people look at it they're like oh yeah this is a fine work i'm mm. not saying you should go overboard of course we'll don't go shop. overboard let let us still see your skin you know let's see the makeup so yeah that and also yes also tag the brand all this um i think one of the one of the um one of the factors that also grew me was also because brand i think when i was at 1000 followers the first brand that reposted me was Murphy brushes and then from then it just started like people started reposting me and then i was out there so make sure you're tagging the right brands don't just tag anybody the right brands okay well um i really agree with what my guests have said the only thing i, I would add is um feedback right so yeah be open to feedback. Okay. A lot exactly. of people will be like, oh, you know, this person is just hating, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But those things are very important. Yeah. So for instance, if you're not getting a lot of likes, maybe, you know, do something more interesting yeah, or another, exactly. a very interesting post, pictures that are clear, videos that are clear. I'm, I'm very not clear. an expert <laughs> or anything. Yeah. This is what I know from my Instagram. Um, pictures that are clear, videos that are clear, mm -hmm. um, not overly photoshopped to the point yeah. that people don't even recognize you yeah. and not under photoshopped to the point that you know you're yeah. not even representing Yourself, your product yeah. or, well. what, or your work well at all because there's some pictures i look at and i'm like that could be anybody <laughs> yeah. in that picture right now i can't even tell that it's the person because it's so mm -hmm. black and white or it's so um saturated yeah. for instance and if it's makeup i guess people really want, want to, to see, see the work, work. Yeah. exactly exactly so that's just my advice um take feedback and make sure that you're posting your work um without doing too much 
without doing too much Photoshop and without yeah. doing too little. And also, what they said is very important about putting in the work because a lot of people think since it's so, beauty, yeah, it's going to be so easy. Yeah. How hard is it to look no. beautiful? Every day? <laughs> I'll tell you for me. So actually, I don't do my, I don't know how to do makeup very well. So to actually do makeup, mm -hmm. and when I see people that look so beautiful and so glammed out, I am. I'm blown away because yeah. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to draw my eyebrows. I'm, <laughs> I know how to do mascara and lip yeah. gloss. Up. The basic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's, I, it's a lot of work and you yeah. have to be willing to put in the work. Or you're not exactly. going to How are you going to drive traffic when you're posting yeah. once a month? Mm -hmm. So anyways, guys, um, good luck with that. We're going to take our next question for the day. So let's hear it from the void. How do I choose the perfect lip color as a woman of color? I always find it hard picking the right lip color that suits my dark complexion. Okay, so I have this problem as well. Okay, I don't know what suits me. Everything I do every day is nude because I, <laughs> I just believe that with nude you can't go wrong. But yeah. I love your lipstick, for instance. Thank you. So how do I know what color suits me? Because I don't think I can apply purple on myself. <laughs> and I, I, there's also this lipstick, Lady Danger, that is like orange oh, yeah. or whatever. Orangey red. <laughs> how, like, is that for dark skin? You know, what shade of red is for dark skin? How do you know what suits your color? Well, it's all about trying different um, colors out on yourself, see how it looks on you. Um, there are very bright ones. I would stay away from the very bright ones because they kind of, although some of them make your lips look whiter, mm -hmm. especially the blue-based ones. Mm -hmm. They are bright and they are blue-based. They make your uh, t teeth look whiter. Okay. But um, I still feel like you still need to be choosy when it comes to bright colors because they don't all look flattering on our skin tone. Yeah. It might look really nice on someone pale, but for someone really dark like um, of color like me, it might look just ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah, just try it on, see what works. Also, a lip liner, you might want to go bright, use a lip liner, tone it down a little bit. If you want to go pink, don't go pink pink like the very bright baby pink no that would look yeah. crazy on you on a white person it would look nice but um on myself I, I would but when you use a lip liner say use a burgundy lip okay. liner line your lips then blend it in it works okay yeah okay all right sandra you know a lot of people say dark skin girls can't wear bold colors but i disagree i'm dark skin like i'm really dark but look at my lip color it's bold like yeah. i feel like you can walk any lip color but you should make sure you line it properly. Like right now, the lip color I have in the middle is a really bright pink, but uh -huh. I didn't wear it on its own. Exactly. I it wore it purple, purple first yeah. before yeah. the pink. So you can walk with any color, but just make sure you line it first before you wear it. Okay. You get so line it, and, and does it matter what color you use to line it? You were saying stay with yeah. bright yeah, liners, yeah? It yeah, it matters. Like yeah, yeah, it matters. Like okay. you can use the very bright colors to line your lips and yeah. then put a so bright color. The one you need to line should be a darker a one. A darker one, yeah. The only sure I have is like a makeup artist will put like, um, I don't know, blue on some people or whatever. Some mm -hmm. people try to make a statement and there's nothing yeah, wrong, wrong with that. With it's that, yeah. fabulous like on, um, on a calendar a runway or a exactly. poster or but not for every day. And then you see the person not, not after the shoot day. and you're like, rub it off. Clean, yeah. Clean, clean, <laughs> clean your face. Some yeah. certain colors are not meant for everybody. No, no. Yeah. Like the greens yeah. and the blues. Are, come on. <laughs> okay, so I definitely think that um, it's where you're going, it should yeah. be appropriate, number one. And number two, you just need to figure out what works with your skin. And that can only come from trying, trying. and trying, trying and yeah. trying and different error. things. Yeah. Exactly. And maybe take a picture of yourself. Exactly. So that you see. Like no picture, right? Yeah. Or, and ask a close friend or two, I don't know, yeah. just to be sure yeah. and to be on the safe side. Guys, we need to take a quick break and we'll be back with our last question for the day. Don't forget that you can hashtag YGI on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter to let us know what you think and let us know if you have any questions you've got issues we'll be back after the break stay tuned hello guys and welcome back to you've got issues it's still an exciting show here and we're talking about everything beauty and blogging and i'm still here with sandra and tina it's time for our last question for the day so let's hear it from the board a lot of people think that blogging is an easy way to make money online i honestly want to go into it so i can get free products and make money from it do you have some tips for people like me who are interested in making money from this? Okay, so I'm gonna let you start first, Sandra, with that question. Okay. A lot of people think that blogging, doing YouTube, it's easy, but it's actually not easy. You need to put in a lot of work and it takes time. You can't expect to just start today and you expect that the money will start coming in. Like it takes a while. It might take some people way less time than others, than others but the, the thing you need to know is that 
the way it happens for one person might not be the way it happens for you. Just you need to just be passionate about what you do. Don't just go into it because you're going into it to make money. Yeah, that shouldn't be the driving force for you to go into it. You need to be passionate about it because when you when you do what you love, mm -hmm. when you're passionate about, it actually shows true. It actually shows to the people who watch you and yeah. who follow you. So put in the work. Be patient. That's all I have to say. Okay, so be patient. So a tip for starting: be patient and make sure you put in a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. You. Okay. So um, truth is, a lot of people go in with that mindset. Oh, I'm going in to make money. It's beauty. It's so easy. Yeah, it's, it's easy, easy. It's but easy. it's not. You shouldn't even go in with that kind of a mindset. So anything. If you want to do beauty, it has to. It has to be because you're passionate about it. You want to. Like you go out every day with your makeup on, and people um, commend you and like, oh wow, this is really nice. You know, what products do you? What brands do you use? Just go into it with the mind of helping people, and you know, helping people get better with their own makeup. So if the money comes along, fine, good. But you shouldn't just work because it. oh i'm working for money you shouldn't you should have something doing on the side don't yeah, exactly. base your whole um income on or hopes yeah on youtube on or on instagram or stuff i i've been doing youtube for, sorry not youtube instagram for two years and i've not made much from it because one probably because i haven't gone into youtube yet i have made money from instagram but it's not as much as i would have made if i was on youtube yeah and i also yeah free brands as long as you're doing well um you are get your pooling crowd to your page yes brands are going to reach out to you they're going to send you free products i get free products all the time so that one is not a problem once you're doing the right thing you're doing um you're you're, you're representing your work right mm -hmm. brands are going to come to you but let don't let that be your priority your priority should be uh your passion Focus on that, build it. And shine that Build passion. it, yeah, yeah and then passion. shine, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, for me, I think that the first thing is to answer your question. You said um, you hear that it's a, an easy way to make money online. Mm. I'm telling you that from seeing, just hearing everything that they have to say that I don't know anything about. And I get my makeup done almost every day. Mm -hmm. But even just to make a video with my makeup on or to talk about the process is not it's easy. Not. So the first thing is I'll debunk that stereotype for you it's not easy to you know start your own beauty business or to start blogging online mm -hmm. the first thing that you need to do is perfect your craft it's yeah, even in exactly. the bible sharpen your axe exactly. you can't get into yeah. anything and not know what you're doing and think that you're going to do really well and just start making the big box because mm -hmm. people that make the big box are people that are consistent exactly have been doing it over time mm -hmm. have put in the work and yeah. have gotten to a point where they've built a loyal fan exactly. base do you yeah. understand yeah. loyal loyal audience that's even like a real key yeah. but i think the first thing you can do is perfect your craft right mm -hmm. if you're still thinking it's easy then it's probably not for you a yeah. lot of people wake up and they're like oh i'm i heard that acting is an easy way to become popular or acting is an easy way to <laughs> this or that you'll be popular for being ridiculous yes. on yeah. screen because if it's not a natural talent if you're not good at it mm -hmm. why would you just jump into something so perfect your craft um when you start out if you're trying to figure out how to make money maybe start with smaller products right so reach out to um maybe a few people that you know that maybe sell some products or have some products just tell them oh you know or buy even buy like yeah, in the beginning buy. right yeah you, can you, buy have to buy. you have to buy yeah. exactly and just show you know what you can do with those, those products, products yeah. if you can do really well with that then eventually people start reaching out to, to you, you and saying they want yeah. to work with you exactly. try partnerships with people first but mm -hmm. you're not just going to wake up and I mean, you're not Sandra Bullock. And start making money one wake day. Up and people are like, oh, yeah. she's on YouTube or she's on Instagram. Let's mm -hmm. give her our money. It's really, really hard, even yeah. for people that are at the top. So yeah. don't think it's easy. You have to put in the work. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Yeah. And for I helping me with these <laughs> questions because I wouldn't have had any idea how to answer them. And thank you to Bill Concept, the luxury furniture store, for providing this amazing location. So you guys back home for watching. You are the real stars of the show. We'll be here same time and same place next week, so you better tune in.